Hello, I'm Wayne McGuire and welcome to Property Success New Zealand where each week I bring you the real estate experts and they share with you their insights and their knowledge. And on this week's program we have Alistair, the head of product with Trade Me Property, polishes off the crystal ball with some predictions for the New Zealand market. Ben from Herald Homes, who will tell us which way we should advertise, print or internet. We also have a quick look at some auction action from this week, and I'll give you some tips on bidding at auction. And Pat from Property Press will answer, will the real estate market disappear over the Christmas holidays? And our expert of the week is Denise from AdGirl, who tells us about a great service she has for vendors and for agents, and how 2016 is going to be a demanding year for her personally. That's all on Property Success New Zealand today. Well, joining us now is Alistair, and Alistair is uh, with Trade Me Property. And Alistair, I know that you have a real passion for property uh, and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, you analyse it, you spend a lot of time looking for trends and working out what could happen next and looking back on, on patterns. Mm. Uh, predictions, what, what do you think we will see in the market going forward? Always a difficult call, as you know, Wayne. You know, the, the best property predictors are the ones who look back and say, that's what would have happened, and it did happen. It's, it's a tough one. You know, we've had an amazing year. Mm -hmm. Prices continue to rise in Auckland at levels that seem to defeat the object of what prices should rise at. But mm -hmm. the good thing, I think, is that the, the effect of the Auckland market seems to be spreading wider. Okay. Uh, very definitely in the, in the Bay of Plenty and Waikato, mm -hmm. that effect is coming through partly because Aucklanders are seeing the asset value of going out of the market. Yep. But I think generally the, the economy and, of course, finance costs are mm. way down. Mm. So I think uh, I don't foresee a bubble. I don't foresee a massive collapse. But we've, uh, we've seen the early signs, and we pick it up in the asking price expectation, that Auckland's dropping from the 21% year-on-year growth to the 15%. Mm. And I think through the next 12 months, we'll drop that down to maybe a growth of 10%, maybe even back into single digits. Now, remember, that's growth year on year. So maybe it's only 8%, but it's 8% on top of 20%. What we're sitting in there before. Exactly. So it's not going down. It's merely that we're beginning to plateau a little bit from that point of view. And you're seeing that in behind, say, Trade Me, where people, agents are loading, or the administrators are yep. loading in the asking price. So yep. you're seeing that start to ease off. People saying, if I aim too high, I'm going to miss everything. Yep. I need to come back a fraction. Yeah, it's a search price. I mean, yep. as, you, as you well know, and this industry knows, not so much of the property is listed with the price. It's more sure. by negotiation auction. Yep. But it's the indicative asking price in the search range that is helping us see. And because of the quantity of listings, we get the, a good median. Mm. And that's what we, we track every month. And that's what's beginning to slow down. This month, November, 15% uh, Auckland year on year, but go back to say May or June, it was 21%. Mm. So you can see that's already adjusting. Equally, Bay of Plenty a year ago was maybe three or 5%, now it's 12%. Mm. So you can see how we're almost seeing that, that movement come out. As I say, I pick on the Bay of Plenty, it's right there. <laughs> uh, equally, you go down south, the Nelson, the Marlboroughs are looking good, Wellington's not bad, Taranaki's been good. Um, some South Island, not so good. The okay. West Coast, Southland. K uh, Christchurch is, is beginning to pick up in property sales. Rents are coming down in Christchurch, interestingly. Okay. Partly because that, that huge demand post-earthquake um, yes. was, was never satisfied until new property came on the market. That supply has now over-exceeded demand. And you've reached a peak, and it's actually come back down. So rents are, are cheaper than they were a year ago in Christchurch. Most interesting situation. Now, with your passion, I'm mm. sure you're also looking outside of the country. So overseas, uh, are there trends that you're picking up that you would uh, share with us? Yeah, I mean, I think if we, if we follow that discussion around where the market's going, um, you look at London, and it's just like Auckland. It's dominant <laughs> in the UK. And the same in the New York, Los Angeles. It's... Yep. It's almost a, a, a reality of life that people are urban dwellers mm. and they're gravitating to these mega centres, which I, I tend to argue that it's great that Auckland's on the shopping list of major cities mm. in the world. Mm. Without it, New Zealand would be suffering. Mm. So as a trend on global property, it's still invest in property is the main thing. And with interest rates, you know, we're here at the, the high levels of 2.5% base rate. Don't forget the UK mm. is sitting at 1.5%. The US mm. is effectively 0%, mm. which means their mortgages are unbelievably 25 years at full percent. So the, the, the interest in property doesn't stop. Um, mm. It's got to slow down, though. I tell you, Wayne, it's, <laughs> it's a dangerous market which sees growth 
so far ahead of other investment opportunities makes you a little bit cautious, but not cautious enough to feel we're going to hit a 2008 roadblock and just off the edge. Fantastic. And I think that's all good news for mm -hmm. us because the last so. thing we want is to experience 2008 again. Sure enough, there'll be something that comes through. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when we were out uh, recently with a mic on the street, people on the street were saying exactly the same thing. So I think that's, that's a great wrap. Everybody's saying, yes, we understand, we're up. The value of Auckland is fantastic. It rolls now into the suburbs, which is great. But I think people just want the heat to come out a fraction so it is sustainable without going crazy. Uh, Alistair, fantastic. I love your observations on New Zealand and your passion across the whole market, including those overseas trends. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Wayne. Thank Cheers. you. So joining me now is Ben from uh, New Zealand Herald. So Ben, obviously we're Herald Homes, yep. but I want to be a little bit more controversial. So my question for you is, if we're thinking of selling, should we be going with print media or should we be going with digital? What's your answer to that, Ben? Oh, I'm going to probably sit on the fence, um, <laughs> Wayne, with this one. And, and we um, look at, I think I've said previously that we look at a lot of uh, research, and I'd say print and digital. It's something that you need both of, okay. and it's uh, key to the campaign. So the answer is, is have them both together. Absolutely, absolutely. So a really good um, research has done, been done in Australia from um, CoreLogic, which was done 850,000 mm -hmm. yep. homes wow. over a two-year period. So. It was a very substantial um, research data group, and it's, Australia's probably good for us to compare to because they're mm -hmm. a vendor-funded model as is New Zealand. Yeah, you're very similar, isn't it? It is, it is. So um, they really kind of wanted to go, hey, what works? You know, we've got two buckets here. We've got people that use print. We've got mm -hmm. people that use digital. Let's see if either of them help. And, and what did the research show? Did it point in one direction or the other? What, what was the answer? Yeah, so firstly, it was kind of whether a buyer was found, um, okay. time on the market, mm -hmm. um, and the last thing was any price reduction. So they are the kind of measures. And then um, for argument's sake, we'll take um, where you're from, mm -hmm. Mission so Bay. So Mission Bay, eastern yep. suburbs of Auckland. Yep, so they'll take um, kind of two, they'll take the sales data from that and the media data, and then they'll go, okay, uh -huh. cool. So we've got um, all the sales in Mission Bay, we've got all the media data that they use, and we'll, yep. we'll, we'll come out with two, two subsets. So we'll come out with print, will come out with digital. So from there they go, all right, so the people that use print, um, their buyer was found and we had a success rate of, say, 79%. Mm -hmm. um, and say for digital, they, their success rate was different. So this is what Australia did, uh, and they did it over the five major cities in Australia, and the results were pretty phenomenal. So and your answer at the beginning was have a mixture of both. So... Did they see that, that if you had that mixture, your success rate, would, and, and I think those success rate measures are very good, aren't they? Oh, they're yep. fantastic. So uh, results across Australia were um, pretty um, supportive of using print as well yep. um, and the power of print. So it decreased um, the days on the market by 11%. Fantastic. Um, in Sydney, for instance. And since um, time on the market was reduced by seven days across the whole board, mm -hmm. and um, the price achieved increased by 8.7% across Australia. Wow, great yep. measures, aren't they? Yeah, it's fantastic. And 850,000 homes. Like, we've done a smaller yeah. um, research in New Zealand, and that was specific to Herald Homes um, on, across Auckland, which was mm -hmm. um, for houses above a million. And the results were very, very similar. We did it okay. over a six-month period and okay. how many homes over a million dollars sold in that amount of time. But we got the same data. We got all the sales data, all the media data, and it did have a similar um, you know, result to what Australia has seen. So then uh, to wrap that up, your summary for somebody thinking of uh, advertising their house and, and going to market and selling their house? Yeah, so... Oh, the takeaways from this is um, it's key to it's key, especially for affluent areas, because yep. it does yep. um, give your home a kind of place in the market, which is quite exclusive. Being in the in, in print, mm -hmm. and the second thing is you, it's key, and we've mentioned it in uh, the earlier weeks on gaining that emotional yep. committed buyer. Um, it is that subset subset group that you can't miss on, and having them, they generally pay a premium price, so it's key to your campaign. Fantastic. What a great answer uh, from the man who's the expert on print, uh, straight down in the middle saying it is print and online added together. All of those success measures are all better 
uh, when you have that combined marketing package. So uh, really appreciate that, Ben, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's go back and touch on our auction tips again. And there will come that moment where the auctioneer will invite that opening bid or offer. Now that's your time to get engaged. It's no longer an open home where you're passive, you're now active and you've got to show everybody else in the room that you are here to make this property yours. All right buyers, so in your hands, good interest on this property. Uh, a great offering there, six low rise units on the city fringe and has that freehold land holding under it. So in your hands buyers, where would you like your opening bidder offer to be? Call me away. $1 million. Next tip is, as you see other bidders come in and they're bidding, don't bid at the same pace as they do. And I'm amazed as an auctioneer. I stand at the front of the room, I'll do it 500 times in a year, and I'll watch people. If these people take, uh, they bid, and then it's your turn, and you take 15 seconds to make your decision, when it becomes their turn, they take 15 seconds also. It's almost like this beautiful, balanced uh, game of tennis going back and forth. Don't do that, you've got to be dominant. So if they're taking 15 seconds, use their 15 seconds to decide if you're in and you're ready to bid. And they bid, you already know what you're going to do and you bid straight away, straight back on top. And the heat of the room and the pressure's back on the other buyer. At $2,500,000 now for the one of another bid, down the middle I've got it there now. Look back to my start at $2,500,000 now. First call at $2,500,000. Second call at two million five. Third and final, we all done, all silent. Two six, two six it is. You better in. Two six and seven do I say, sir? Two six down the middle, I've got it there now. Fifty, happy to take your fifty, sir. You're ready. You bid straight back on top and the heat's on them. So instantly you look like you're under control. You look very, very confident and you've staked uh, that claim and said, I'm going to make this all mine. And the other buyers are now starting to react to that. At 2,750,000, 50 it is, 2828 at the back of the room. Still in the 50s then, sir. 25, why not, sir? Absolutely. 2,825,000, 2825 it is now. At the front, against the back, against the front, against the rest of the room. Look back to the starter. 2,825,000, I've got it here. 50, 50 it is now on the 25. 2,850 at the back of the room. 75, sir. Give me the nod on that. $2,850,000 now for the one of a 25. I'm at the back of the room. First call at $2,850,000. Second call. Third and final. There we go. 75, 875 it is now. You know what your budget is, and that's very important because I really want you to know at the point at which you should stop, I want you having that on your page, and when you hit it, I want you to stop dead in the water. But as you're coming up to that, don't show any sign of weakness. Don't wave a flag saying, hey, I'm starting to run out of money. It's just going to encourage the other bidder. They're going to have another crack and they're going to beat you on it. Look like you're strong, like you can bid all day. Doesn't take, you don't care what it's going to take, you're going to own this property. Yes, are we? 2-9, two 2-9 nine, two nine to bid. 2,900,000, look for a quarter, sir. At 2,900,000, 25 bid now, still not easy. At 2,900,000, they've got it now at the back of the room. Be very clear, 2,900,000, first call. Second call. Third and final, all done, all silent. Here we go 25 again, sir. Look for the rise on top of that. I call three times. Hold on. First, second, third and final. Pause. One quick pause. I'm walking to my owner. I'm talking to the bidder at the back of the room. Give us a moment, buyers. Now remember, uh, in our case, you've still got to get past me as the auctioneer. I'm there to help you buy and the vendor help them sell. But I'm still going to protect the vendor and get the absolute best price for them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Let's get the uh, auction underway again. So we return to 8 George Street, uh, Mount Eden, Auckland. Appreciate with our phone bidder there, the work we've done. We do have an improved bid there. I'll just look to confirm that in public. 2935000 Thank you very much. At 2,935,000, Ken, what are our instructions? We're selling away. There we go on the market now, buyers. 2,935,000. I take any rise on that. We're on the market. We're now selling away. Be very clear on the phone now, buyers. Don't miss me. You know we're selling away at 2,935,000 now for the one of a rise on that. I look around the room. First call at 2,935,000. Second call. 
Third and final, are we all done, all silent. Are we in, we out, phone bidder. Appreciate that, no problem at all. Sir, we bid again, no problem at all. Look back to my start as it was a while ago, but do we go again? Appreciate that, sir, thank you very much. There's no further bids, I do sell now. First call, second, third and final, all done, all silent. We are going, going, sold. Well done, congratulations. Well done to our owner and well done, Ken, as always. In reality, you've got your budget and you stop on that budget, okay? So I'm there with you on that one. But now if the bidding slows down and they're down into ones because they're feeling the pressure, but if you're still in budget, uh, penalise them every time they bid against you. They bid one, don't bid one, bid five or bid ten. Now if you do that three or four times, maybe two times, it might be enough to stop that bidder in their tracks. And then in our situation, you're the highest bidder, and then you'll pause with me and we'll have a chat about where you're at and I'll give you a chance to improve and I'll seek instructions from our owner. So that's how I would suggest you do your bidding. You quickly know where you stand, you bid back on top of them, put the pressure on the other person. Uh, if you've got your budget in there, go in the ones. I'm, you know, I'm fine with that. I think I can, uh, in some auctions, I'll stack up $100,000 in $1,000 bids. So very easy to count, can keep doing it all day long but the other buyer stays with you. They won't give up for a thousand. But if they do a thousand and you penalize them with a 10, they do another thousand, you put another 10 on, ah, I think, you know, one's bidden twice shy. They might pull up at that stage. Last point, that budget. Uh, I treat the budget and your, your final point, your top price that you can bid to, and it's been in your plan all the way along, as the edge of the cliff. Run up to the edge of the cliff at a million miles an hour. But when you get there, stop. But don't creep up on it. You're just not going to win. You're just going to look weak as you go. Uh, and then the other buyers are all with you or all over you. So there's the edge of the cliff. Run up to it at a million miles an hour. And when you hit it, stop. And then after that, you're fine. You just go, no, I'm, I'm out. I don't bid again. I'm happy with that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we will have more tips as we go through. But uh, that should give you enough now at the auction to look dominant and use your budget with the maximum strength. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's of benefit to you as a buyer. So here we go. We're now heading into what we would call the holiday season. So, uh, Pat, I thought today maybe we talk about that. And with your experience and the Property Press experience, what are you expecting as we go into that holiday period, Pat? Wayne, there's a great myth in New Zealand that, that the holidays brings a complete close down in New Zealand, but it simply doesn't yep. happen in residential real estate. Um, let me give you some examples. The last three years, on average, in January, there's been over 4,800 sales. Wow, that's fantastic. If we look at January this year, which is the most recent January, mm -hmm. obviously, we've had, there were 4,840 unconditional sales made for a total of $2.6 billion. Wow. Okay. $2.6 billion just in residential real estate sales just in January. Just in January, okay. So we, we, we can't call it a holiday period then, is, can we? Absolutely not. No, the, um, what um, everybody in the market should understand that there's there's heightened readership. There's heightened people mm. have got more time to look. Mm. Um, and we'll talk about print runs and things. The ad volumes increase, so there's lots of holiday reading. Um, there's much greater uptake of the property presses from the curbside boxes and baskets. Okay. And uh, ad volumes, for example, on average week during the year seasonally, we run between eleven and twelve hundred unique pages per week. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still in production for the holiday uh, editions now, but we're up to 2,300. Wow. So such is the, is the pending activity that, that could happen. People are recognising that, that, that the market is still on go, and uh, they're, they're, they're there. So that tells me some smart uh, agents, salespeople, have got that message through to their vendors. Those vendors are still active. Uh, and property press is responding. So you've got a, pro a product there that's uh, going to get the message out to the people who've got time now to look. Certainly we are. There's not only the increased ad volumes, but what we also do, Wayne, is we really crank up the, the print runs as well to respond to the heightened uh, uptake of the property presses from the curbside boxes. Um, one area that's in particular that has a massive increase in print run is um, the Bay of Plenty area, okay. where we, we home deliver to half the houses there each each week and the other half week too but in the in the Christmas holiday period we deliver to every house so our weekly print run there goes from 27,000 to a holiday edition of 55,000 
So it's a combination of homes and height and curbside uptake. So the rest of the countries are uh, pretty much the same. That the curbside uplift is really, really increases. Mm -hmm. and so in setting the print runs, what we do is we will. We've got highly experienced distributors right across the country. Yep. Uh, we get them. Yep. Uh, we survey them all in January, and we find out in their area which areas were oversupplied and which areas were undersupplied in property presses. And uh, so you're double checking them every every January to see how yep. that December worked, and then you're yep. plotting ahead for the the yep, next Christmas period. Yeah, we certainly okay. are. That's that's what we will base next holiday periods print runs on. On, and, on um, how it performed this year. Really, really interesting glitches in that um, Wellington <laughs> takes us by surprise every year. Um, we, there's more than double the uh, uptake of property presses from the curbside wow. boxes and baskets. Now, I can't explain that. We can explain, say, Lakes District, Queenstown Lakes District, High sure, and Flux, makes sense, makes sense. Nelson yep. more than double, um, Taupo squeezes in an extra addition. Uh, but Wellington, just one out of the box, it just uh, the print run actually needs to be doubled to cover the, the demand. So such is, is the experience that we gain over time. And just a point on that uh, print run as we wrap up. So uh, that is, is done once, and then the, the vendor's property stays in the market longer than normal. It's not a, it's not yes. a weekly operation right now. For the most part, they're getting three weeks for the price of one. Okay, brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. So it's... It's a great opportunity for them. How great is that, Pat? I think that is stunning. Uh, so for viewers out there, you've missed this year. That, that's the reality. But certainly when you're selling next year, you need to think about the property press and salespeople do also, so that we are set up and the client's property is sitting there for that period of time, just paying once, but staying in the market. And as Pat has said, uh, we take the Bay of Plenty as an example. There's going to be people sitting there. So... Uh, we're going to be down there for a couple of weeks on, at the mountain, sitting out at Ohauiti. So, uh, Pat, we'll be reading with interest. Don't get sunburned. Reading all the pages. <laughs> I'll try not to. Thank you, Pat. Pleasure to be here. So joining me now is a, a great friend and a great colleague. Uh, Denise, welcome. It's great having you here. We do so much work together, and Denise is the ad girl. So... Uh, Denise, for us, does a lot of marketing, a lot of script writing. Uh, you've put together my business plan, so they're quite graphic. Um, a great business you've got there, Denise. Thank you, and I'd like to say thank you personally to you, Wayne, as you were the first person who actually gave me an ad to write for real estate. <laughs> and I went, okay, and then I thought, how am I going to do this? <laughs> and it was Ken Chong in your office, and oh, we to do it. And then you were also the first person who gave me my first real estate graphic design work. Wow. So it seems fitting that I'm here today chatting with you about what I've done in that time, which is actually quite amazing. Mm. I've built a business just on copywriting and design work with real estate agents. And I think the thing is that people don't realise or vendors sometimes forget is that the power of the word and Absolutely. a well-written ad is worth its money. Well, if you think, if you think back, we used to take our own photos. I remember driving around in the car with my camera. I thought it was flash. I'd take my photos. I'd walk back to or drive back to the office and then write ads. And they were terrible, to be honest. Uh, your choice of words, it, it paints the picture. It makes all the difference. I, I, I couldn't believe somebody now would not use a professional copywriter. Yeah, I agree, because I come in with a fresh pair of eyes. Mm. I see things that agents don't see. I talk to the vendors, and they tell me what they like about their house and why they bought it, and then I make a story. I don't yeah. say, this house has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. <laughs> You've got your icons for that. I say, yeah. what is it that I come in, and the first thing I see about this house, and I write a story about it. And then, hopefully, I also do some design work around that too. Yeah. And yeah. that's, I think where we've been talking about digital and print being so important because mm. we can put it all online, but for someone to actually pick up at an open home, an open home book and take that away with them is so important. Now, we've got some examples here. So Denise also jumps in and the marketing can be on the property. We can do a short run magazine, which I think is extremely smart. I don't see anybody else doing that. And also for the agents, promotion there on getting their message across to the market. And I think you've got some uh, great examples there, yes, Denise. Yeah, well, Chrissy Maguire. There we go, Chrissy. She's already shown hers on a previous episode. Really great. She's put in tips on how to present your property before you actually go on the market. Brilliant. So that sort of thing. And then I also do like personal 
um, magazines that showcase real estate yeah, agents fantastic. like yep. Tanya Kowalser of Ray yep. White. So it's all about her, it's about the properties she's sold, what she's done in the past, some social things that she's done, and she might put in a, maybe a, a property or two that she's marketing at the moment. Mm. So when she goes for a listing, she gives a prospective vendor that, and they go, wow, you're onto it, I want to list my property with you. And that is exactly what's happened in this case. Well, that's fantastic, and I know uh, you know Tanya does a great job uh, in real estate, and that's that's going to raise her profile. I know the work you've done there with uh, with Chrissy has actually created her brand, and, and you've you've been instrumental in doing that. So now the real estate side, you've got that down pat. You are fantastic as you do that. Now you've been so so busy, and recently uh, something else has been put on your plate, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I have been diagnosed with breast cancer. So uh, it's not too far from breast, which is a good thing. Okay, good. So that is coming out on Friday, and then I will be cancer free. However, I will be going into chemo next mm. year just to make sure that it doesn't come back. Yeah, yeah. So what I want to put out there is that it was a, such a shock. To me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally fell off the world. But when I came back, I thought, right, okay, I need to get onto this. What am I going to do? And the information is not that easy to find out out there. There's a lot of information on the internet that you don't want to read. I want to read positive things. Mm. What, are going, what am yeah. I going to do that's going to help me? And luckily, I come from a fashion and beauty uh, background. So I've been able to talk to my friends and I started to find out things such as. I'm now doing something that we're calling the posh wash, where I stick my feet in a bucket of water <laughs> and somehow or other all the skunk comes out. <laughs> it's an aromatherapy type thing, which I'm doing through my friend Bronwyn Jackson at Aroma Spa. Okay. I'm also using aromatherapy products now, juicing. Wow. <laughs> and I'm studying intravenous vitamin C injections, Fantastic. which is a huge killer of cancer. I also discovered that you don't need to lose your hair now and, oh, really? Yeah, and I'm getting a penguin cold cap system sent through the States via Australia. So, <laughs> so that is something that you put on your hair and it freezes the hair follicles, so you don't lose your hair. Geez, I wonder if old guys can use this. This might be good for us also. <laughs> now, uh, Denise, I know when we've spoken, you've said it was so hard to find out information, and, and, and I know you've got a plan around this now, and it's not for yourself, and, and oh. you're so generous. It's now for other people that are going to be following you through when it's their turn or when they find they've got this challenge. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is going to blog it and video record my experiences, but also we need to raise fun money, we need funds sure. for the Look Good, Feel Good cause through the cancer organisation. So what I thought I would do to link this back to real estate is that every real estate job I do, I'll donate a percentage of that income to the foundation but I also, at the same time, give the real estate agents an opportunity to add a dollar or whatever How they want to. How easy is that? To. Yeah. How easy is that? And I think, you know, it only takes $40 to train a volunteer. Wow. $80 to put somebody through the Look Good, Feel Good program, which women really need. You know, they need to know. And it gives them so much confidence and brings back their self-esteem. Fantastic. Which at that time is so important. Well, we're there for you, and we're going to stick with you, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that all the way. And if you need help with anybody else, then we're going to do that also. You're going to have all of our business. Um, and if you need a charity auctioneer to jump in and help, I can do that too, okay? Well, thank you for being with us today on Way Maguire. And next time you see us, the plan is we're actually going to be in some of the hot spots around the country. So we'll head down to the Coromandel, we'll head down to the Bay of Plenty, see that Mount Monganui Beach, and we'll see what's happening in those local markets and what the local real estate agents are doing. So thank you for watching. I wish you the best for Christmas and the holiday period.